now that we are clear on our cause and effect uh, chain of events that led to the um, plants and the animals in the biodome not having enough energy storage molecules, we want to model this out for our Econauts, um, showing them how carbon is moving throughout their biodome so that they don't make the same mistake next time and that they continue that carbon cycle um, in a way that's beneficial to the environment overall. And our model is gonna focus on carbon moving because again, carbon um, has been an important atom for us in our series of cause and effect events uh, because carbon is in energy storage molecules. It's involved in photosynthesis as well as cellular respiration. And when you are ready today, you are going to create a model of the entire biodome and how carbon is moving throughout all components of the biodome. And you can either use the modeling tool in Amplify Online in lesson three to do that, or you can draw your own model out on that sheet of paper that you have. Um, and here's why I said earlier today, it's gonna be helpful to have your past models um, in front of you as you work today, because this biodome model is really just combining the previous models that we have made uh, together into one complete picture. So this model will have elements of your previous photosynthesis model, as well as your previous model of carbon moving through cellular respiration. And I am not today going to create my model um, and have you follow along with me uh, because I think that you are able um, to do this now on your own um, without watching me do mine. However, I will show you what my finished model looks like so that you can check your work and make any corrections to your model that you may need. So at this time, pause the video and make your model. All right, let's check our work. Um, so here's what my biodome model looks like. Um, I have my carbon and carbon dioxide in the air, as well as carbon in energy storage molecules down here in the dead matter. And I'm showing how everything is cycling um, throughout, how all of this carbon is moving throughout these different components of my ecosystem through my labeled arrows, okay? So I'm showing that carbon is going into the atmosphere from producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers, and decomposers um, through that process of cellular respiration. So I have that labeled in each piece. I have the inputs and the outputs of cellular respiration labeled. Um, I am also showing carbon moving between um, producers to consumers from um, primary consumers to secondary consumers as these things eat one another. Um, I am also showing that movement of carbon from dead matter to decomposers because that's what decomposers eat. And then again, I'm showing that movement of carbon um, from each of these four components down to dead matter um, as those living things um, die off over time. And then here in my producers, again, not forgetting that um, oh so important process of photosynthesis, bringing in carbon dioxide from the air as well as energy from sunlight to do that, um, because this is how our other organisms within the biodome get the energy storage molecules. Um, it's our plants that need to make them first in the process of photosynthesis. Great job. Now, so exciting. We are ready to write a recommendation to our Econauts um, for how their plans for their next biodome should be different than their plans for this first biodome so they don't run into the same problem twice. When you are ready, you're gonna write out a recommendation to the Econauts um, and you wanna make sure that you're using your cause and effect flowchart as well as our biodome model to help us do this and make sure we're not forgetting any important detail. Um, as you are writing, check off the words in this word bank to make sure that they are included in your work. Did you use all of the words? Great. If not, go back and revise so that you are including a missing term. And the last thing we're gonna check in our writing, um, check in our recommendation is that 
we have all of these steps. Um, and so if you would like, um, you can check out my sentence starters here um, and reflect on how you might have said something similar in your written recommendation. And again, if you're missing something that I have um, here in my sentence starter suggestions, pause the video and revise your writing so that you're including those elements. Um, so are you very clearly stating in a claim your recommendation for what the Econauts should or should not do this second time around? Are you then going in to that cause and effect series of events? Um, what burying dead matter causes, how that impacts decomposers when they're not getting energy storage molecules, how that's leading to a decrease in carbon dioxide in the air, and then how that is affecting our producers and the overall amount of energy storage molecules. And then lastly, we wanna make sure we're being clear to them how this outcome can be prevented and um, showing how this is an example of that interconnectedness between all components of an ecosystem. Awesome job. So as we reflect on our unit uh, here today, I want to remind you that this biodome that we have been investigating is based off of a real life biodome experiment that scientists conducted called Biosphere 2. And Biosphere 2, this biodome still exists and many scientists really take advantage of being able to study this closed ecosystem and do experiments. Um, within this biodome. So I have, as we reflect today, a short video clip for us to watch, um, telling us more about how scientists today are still using this biodome and the work that they're doing. So let's watch. So today at Biosphere 2, uh, our visitors come inside and they get to see all the biomes up close and personal. And that lets us uh, save money on the energy cost of keeping a closed system, but it also lets us take parts of Biosphere 2 to close it off when we need to do research, for example, in the rainforest or with our Landscape Evolution Observatory. I'm Ty Taylor. I'm a scientist at Biosphere 2. This is the rainforest biome, which is like a model of a natural tropical forest. But in this model, we can actually control the climate, which is something you can't do in the natural world. Okay, Steve, can we get some rain in the northeast quadrant, please? For northeast, overhead quadrant, ready to go. We can make rainfall, we can put the forest through drought, and we can raise temperatures to simulate what a hotter world might look like. In my research here, I help to answer one of the big scientific questions of our time, which is how tropical forests will respond to a warming climate. During photosynthesis, leaves exchange molecules between the leaf and the atmosphere. In the rainforest biome, we can seal off this tropical forest, and that way we can monitor the coming and going of all of the molecules through the forest. This helps us understand how the forest will interact with the climate we can measure how a whole ecosystem responds to changing climate. When the Biospherians lived inside, they had a farm space where they grew their food crops. Today, we're using that farm space to run our institutional experiment, studying water. For 10 years, we'll learn everything about how water interacts with a complex landscape and how water, plants, and soil move carbon and energy in a hotter, drier world. My name is Aditi Sengupta. I study soil microbes, and today I'm going to take some soil cores from the Landscape Evolution Observatory. So once I have the soil samples, I'm going to take them back to my lab, and then I'm going to analyze them for all the kind of different microbes that I can find in there. The challenge out in the real world is you have all of these uncontrolled variables that you don't exactly know what is driving the system. And what we can do here at a really big scale is we can control those variables but still see systems operating at scales that are more realistic than what you find in a small laboratory.
Wow, that's really cool. Can't wait to um, see what happens uh, with that work of those scientists in Biosphere 2. Um, so as we finish our unit today on matter and energy and ecosystems, um, now would be a really great time once again to message your science teacher as I know they miss you um, and I miss my students so much and we love to hear from you um, and know how you're doing. Uh, so message your science teacher today, tell them hi, tell them how you're doing and share that recommendation that you just wrote to the Econauts about how their plans for the next biodome should be different. I know your science teacher would um, love to see how your thinking has developed throughout this unit. Um, and I wanna thank you as well for letting me uh, join you here in your science learning um, throughout this weird time in our world. Um, and I just wanna remind you that you are loved, you are missed, and remember to stay safe, stay healthy, and stay kind. Bye.